let's jump into some reacts for today. And I want to start out with something that I have not watched yet, but I do, I do think that the, um, basically I saw my discord get very angry at this video and I'm, I'm assuming I know why, uh, this is called rethinking PVP four star citizen 318 from ray's guide my assumption is ray is not much of the pvp type from what i can tell so i assume that they don't respect his opinion very much and uh yeah i guess let's see why hello this is daniel raymond the voice behind ray's guide and i thought it was 3.18 inching closer to live release i would update my thoughts on pvp with it in mind because 3.18 will change PvP in ways that it won't really be re evident until we see it going weeks without a new patch resetting the database. Let me start with clarifying what I mean by certain terms. PvP is any game activity which pits one player's skill directly against another player's skill. This is opposed to game activities which pit a player's skill against a challenge created by the game, PvE. Pretty much That seems fine, but my my assumption with PvP is always combat related, but okay. Any activity that people will care about, they will eventually want to show off who is better than who. This is normal human being thing. Game designers will need to come up with a way that is constructive to the game, or players will come up with a way to do it anyhow that won't be so constructive to the game. Now, there are some antisocial forms of gameplay which technically fall under PvP, but isn't actually about players pitting their skills against each oh, other. Oh, no. The first are players who are simply having fun out of making others miserable. Who is actually better than who is irrelevant. In fact, if they can get a cheese win, it is all the better because it makes the other person even more angry. I call this sadistic gameplay. It is not saying that all PvP players are sadistic. But clearly, there is an antisocial subset of them that are. And then there are folks who aren't necessarily playing to make one person miserable, but to make the whole game suffer. This antisocial subset. Player killers are playing to make their situation fun. Killing players is fun. Watching ships explode is fun. I think putting the. The. Um, the antisocial words or the um, immediately basically call them bad human beings because they want to make everybody's life worse is not the way to go about it, in my opinion. Um, it's be For me, how I look at it is they're people that are pushing the game's boundaries and basically telling the developer, giving them the ability to make the change uh, that needs to be made before the game goes live is, is how I look at it. I think he made a good point there is that if the developer doesn't make a change, then these players will continue to um, make the game unenjoyable for other players. And... Uh, I'll start out and prefer preface my opinion on Star Citizen and and, and uh, just like open world PvP games is there needs to be uh, something that entices players who do not want to be in combat or interact with other players. There needs to be something that entices them and forces them to want to, um, but also know the consequences of what they're getting into. For example, Pyro. Pyro is a great uh example of a situation where you could put something really cool really valuable some cool experiences that people want to have in pyro but everybody knows the risks they're getting into when they uh go for it i think what ray is trying to get into here is like the port alasar pad killers right so what did cig do well they removed most of the pads and they basically gave you hangers Right. So now at least you can get into your ship, get your shields up and give yourself a chance to survive a fight if there is one at a station that you happen to be at. But even then, I'm still along the thought process of if you're a player who doesn't want to interact with other players very much, don't doesn't want a PvP, doesn't want ship to ship combat. There should be places for you to play and explore 
and have your ship meetups or whatever you're interested in in Star Citizen. We don't have that yet. The PvP are basically saying the game is lame, and if I can't win, I will beat the game by destroying it and make sure nobody else can enjoy it either. Yeah, this this thought process is just... I'm sorry, Ray, it's just stupid. I don't know what else to say. It's just not how it is at all, um, but okay. It's the computer version equivalent of kicking over the table in a tantrum. I call this sociopathic gameplay. And again, not all, but it is a antisocial subset of PvP. The thing about sadistic is... There are weird people on the internet. That's basically what Ray is saying. Is there are really weird people on the internet. Yep. So in every gaming community, you are also going to have those weird people. Thank you for pointing that out. It doesn't change anything. Sociopathic gamers is you can't correct them with the usual levers of game design, the carrots and sticks. And that is because to them, everything in the game is lame and irrelevant to them. The only choice is either hope that they'll get bored and leave or ban them. Now, piracy separately from PvP is a career path in which advancement is gained by stealing from ships either by force or trickery. Piracy has always been an advertised gameplay element in yep. Star Citizen, but in until 3.18, there really hasn't been much actual game behind it. As a result, a lot of stuff has been excused as piracy when it was just shooting up ships for fun. Imagine if mining allowed you to blow up rocks but not actually get any ore out of them. That was kind of the state of piracy in most of Star Citizen 3.0 through 3. Not re I mean, have you watched a Mongrel Squad video? The state of piracy was ransom. And if you didn't accept the ransom, you were blown up because there had to be a consequence to that ransom. Um, there was also rock uh, piracy, or ROC piracy, which was absolutely something that could be done. Um, th this is just... I'm, I'm having a hard time agreeing with a lot of these points. I don't know what That's else to 17. say. And some people just justified purely statistic things as saying, hey, piracy is part of the game. But not in 3.18. In 3.18, thanks to a lot of work by CIG, we have a real piracy feature set in the game. No, you there have more. There is disabling. More. There is boarding. There is looting. There is. There was disabling. There was boarding. There was looting. It was just all done in different ways even stealing the ship itself or at least its hull and you could also steal the ship before but now you could just scrape its hull and make a little bit of money i guess there is a clear path for those things to be expanded on in the future so we now have a justification called bs i, I just think for me this is the next um this is the next step in in piracy currently that's all uh where he looks at it as this is the first step i think this is the next step on anybody using pirate and i'm sorry for like uh, pausing and unpausing so quickly and on top of that where did that stuff come from where did the inspiration for some of these things come from where did the excitement for some of these things come from from these sadistic uh psychopaths that have just been blowing up ships uh for for the last 18 patches right That's to justify antisocial behavior from. You're not pirates. We have piracy. We know what it looks like, and it is not what you were doing. So your behavior does not have any sort of protected status because piracy is allowed in the game. But much more than just piracy is being opened up. As I've said for a long time, the primary PvP structure in Star Citizen, if it's going to be successful, can't be predators versus prey. Because being prey isn't fun. It instead needs to be predators versus protectors with the prey instead being more like the prize. And frankly, there has been a lot opened up for the role of the protector in 3.18. And I'm not so much talking about the constant escort because that is... <sighs> being prey is a thing. I'm like... Tr I I like Ray. I like Ray. I like his videos. I I'm trying. I'm trying to find a way to do this uh diplomatically. 
I'm going to use Albion Online as an example, another game that I've played. I, I can't reference too many games because I've been playing this bad one for too long. But the there are situations in Albion Online where you are a uh, PvE player. You're gathering ore, you're gathering wood, you're gathering stone, and you have to go to more dangerous areas to gather that stone or or wood. Um, and you are absolutely the prey in those scenarios. Now, I think where he's going is just get protectors uh, route. But do you know how heart racing and exciting and fun it is to survive those scenarios um to outrun the predator it is it it is and it can be fun to survive a scenario where you don't have um a great chance of survival but let's hear the rest of his point Indeed that he wants tedious. to say a gameplay where success means nothing happened but my problem is he just writes off the idea of that that type of gameplay completely but rather the emergency piracy response team. We've seen an emergent gameplay surrounding combat medic teams, and I see that as a potential template for the piracy response team. And part of the reason for this is that there's a lot more that a player can offer the rescuers than before. They can be offered a share of the cargo that's being recovered, and they can be offered the rights to salvage the hull, plus any bounties on the defeated pirates and salvaging their hulls too. And with persistence, this can be extended over more than one game session and even have back and forth control struggles between the pirate group and the protector group, even if the original owner of the freighter is no longer present. There's a lot of room for emergent gameplay in the umbrella of pirates versus protectors. Okay, I think if you look at his point in a, uh, in the moment of time that you're being pirated, it makes no sense. But as, as I let him continue to speak, I, I started to listen a little bit more. Um, it, it becomes more of like, what he's talking about is more like org v org. He is dreaming a little bit uh, in the sense that uh, the current state of PES, I don't think supports this as much. Whereas if you're playing on server number two, you know, US number one, uh, and that is the server that you play on, and there's a queue timer to get into it, and there's matchmaking, then you could probably argue that there might be orgs that frequent server, server number one. And then you can maybe have these back and forth between those orgs. I don't think this is a 318 feature, but I do get where he's coming from, is that, uh, hey, uh, recover my cargo and I'll pay you X amount of alpha UEC that can happen over multiple gameplay sessions that can happen with uh, fights over uh, between, you know, multiple orgs and protectors and things like that. I don't think he's necessarily dreaming in that sense. So I think he's making a pretty decent point. There is that PES and some of these scenarios unlock what could be um, uh, some elements of territory control and like fighting with, other players now, and stuff. what would a team of players wanting to do this role of pirate response team look like perhaps as an expansion of their current role of doing medical response well they would need a craft capable to readily defeat or scare off most pirate teams ideally that one exist. that could also support counterboarding actions help in the offloading and recovering of cargo and have a medical facility to be able to heal any casualties happening during the action exist. have you guessed what i'm thinking about in my opinion, it's a fully crewed Carrick with a Pisces. It'd be the <laughs> ideal ship for such a team, with perhaps a vulture or even a reclaimer on call for the hull scraping. Both of the oh man, the people who don't play the game, uh, it, like you, you play the game, but you play your own game, and you don't realize the game that you're actually playing. This ship is horrible. Original derelict, and although in in all of our minds, this ship would be a good ship in our minds it should be but it is not that's the problem it doesn't have it does not have the firepower to fend off a, a piracy group a, a proper proper pirate group you have no chance in a carrick those so sad ex-pirate ships and rather than just sitting around and waiting for the phone to ring they might take pve bounty and bunker missions to help keep the coin flowing and the skills honed 
So what could CIG do to support this kind of gameplay? Well, one suggestion I've made in the past is to make creating a combat assistance beacon be as simple as a hotkey. The MobiGlass app that. would be used to set the default reward. And if they wanted to take it a step further, the system could create a list of all the hostiles nearby and their ships, so anybody accepting the combat assistance beacon would know what they're getting into. I would love for that to be right. Um, so, like, you you hit your combat assist hotkey. Would love to see that. That would be a great thing. And if somebody's really close, they can accept it and get there in time to save you. That would be amazing. The part that I'm having a hard time with is I don't think the game understands who's a hostile and who isn't yet. Uh, like, people... People in the player's party can't be hostile. Like, I don't think it understands that yet. So maybe that's why we don't have it. Also, if there are any available bounty contracts on the hostiles nearby, to add them to the reward and accepting the combat assistant beacon also accepts the bounty hunting contracts, adding to the value. And it isn't even as though the new piracy features are the only PvP item added to 3.18. There's also Security Post Korea, which at least can be a great PvP playground. And yep. the Korea represents a prototype of a whole new type of mission, Retake Location, which will undoubtedly be used to create even more locations for PvP action Absolutely. as we go forward. So in summary, there is a lot of piracy gameplay being added in 3.18 as well as counter-piracy gameplay. So we can call BS on the whole lot of frankly nonsense behavior being justified by saying, hey, it's piracy. It's not, never was, and now we have the real thing available. Now for an update on our- I, I love how we're just completely negating everything Mongrel Squad has done over the last few years. That's so insane giveaways. to me. We now have two ship giveaways and one skilled contest. The first is the 10,000 subscriber thank you for the LTI Hull C, the colossal Cairo container carrying craft, to be given away as soon as the sea becomes viable in the verse. And then there's our big giveaway for the winner's choice of either the Galaxy Complete, the massive modular mining moving medical machine, or that Banu Big Box Bargain Bazaar called the Merchantman. One entry per video for both of those drawings just be a member and subscribe and comment with the secret word and the secret word for this video is pirates versus what plus we have perhaps for not much longer our waiting for 3.18 piloting skills contest for the most amazing landing of a ship hercules size or larger in 3.17 see the video in the description for details on that fly safe keep it real what and i'll this? see you in the verse is this? this is daniel raymond for ray's guide What? Was he really playing at that frame rate, this person? <laughs> That's a cool landing, but was this person actually playing at that frame rate? Or was it recording at that frame rate? It might have recorded at that frame rate. Would be my guess. There's no sound either. This is, uh, this is wild. But that is a crazy landing. Okay. Well, all right. I'm going to, I, I want to give my final thoughts is a, a lot of players in the Star Citizen community, I think, have not played um, like full loot PvP games in the past. Uh, and I just don't think that they have a really good understanding of, of the dynamics that can be created there. And I do think th this is why I always advocate for these uh, haven or safe zones for players to experience star citizen the way they want to and not push narratives like this for the where like how i see the potential for star citizen is there are some levels of eve potential that is quite high in the idea of these battles between orgs uh for territory and things like that i think that there's a lot more that needs to happen for in star citizen to really make that viable in terms of like economy and our ability to what we do with the land that we own and things like that but the the real 
potential in Star Citizen for me personally is there, but I do understand that there needs to be the people who just kind of want to take the scenery in and enjoy that. And I do think Ray gives off the impression that he's more interested in, in taking the scenery in and, uh, you know, maybe mostly PVE type missions and maybe killing the an NPC here and there. But for the most part, it's just kind of experiencing the experience that that I think a lot of the Star Citizen community is interested in right now. But there's a whole group of players who are waiting to actually play a video game that is, you know, has some competitive nature to it and things like that. And it's a little bit um, weird to push this narrative that those people are insane psychopaths uh, when in reality they're competitors and they're competing and even though you're killing players who are not successful just just again i mentioned them like three or four times go watch a mongrel squad video they bring like seven players to kill one and a lot of people get upset by that but every single time it's practice to them it's practicing the mechanics of boarding it's practicing the mechanics of extorting and getting uh players to to stop uh turning players ships off, right? Like figuring out the game mechanics on all those things. I'm sorry. It's, it's just, that is gameplay in itself. And to, to kind of put them down and, and negate all the things that a group like that does is insane. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just leave it there. I just don't get the impression that Ray really plays competitive PVP games. And this is, absolutely going to have a competitive pvp aspect to it right there are some elements of you know i have been absolutely griefed by players in star citizen before i've been stream sniped i've been griefed it's not fun it's boring um there's i've been you know abused by broken game mechanics with certain weapons that kill you in one shot there's all sorts of scenarios like that those people aren't ruining the game, in my opinion, at least not right now. They're bringing to light the problems with the game and allowing the developers plenty of time to solve these problems before they really ruin a player's experience in the future. So I just don't understand uh, the the idea behind this video and his just like the, the base and the foundation that he's even coming from. The risk versus reward is is literally being the mouse in the cat and mouse scenario but i do like the idea that he came across with uh, escorts and and making that a more easily viable experience for somebody cuz again there is a whole nother section of this community that is sitting there waiting as well it's not just the people who want to competitively pvp um well, actually, it is. It's players who want to competitively PvP, um, but be more on the mercenary side. And uh, I, in a game I played, I made a anti-PK org, right? So if there were murderers around, those are the players that we fought against, right? And you had to get really good to be good against those guys because uh, those were some of the best players in the game. And sometimes you had to zerg them or whatever just to win, but it was still some level of emerging gameplay that gets created there and um that was that was something i enjoyed i don't i don't know it's just the idea that it's the 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 choices of words he chose and the foundation that he's on is just something i i think i cannot agree on at all it's it's so bad <laughs>